Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Friday. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thanks for making time today. Good afternoon. Well, another gain for stocks on Wall Street overnight. On the one hand, jobless claims coming in at the expected level, but producer prices up a staggering 7.8% last month in the U.S., the most on record. Uh, the Dow and the S&P at new highs. What's the story in the global markets? Yes, if you look at the U.S. market, S&P as well as NASDAQ did add some bit of a rise. 0.3% uh, to 0.35%, uh, whereas the Dow Jones was kind of flat uh, and small caps were slightly down. Uh, interestingly, even though there are quite a bit of uh, strong inflation numbers coming through, the CPI rising at 5.4% year on year and the uh, PPI rising a significant amount. Uh, despite all that, if you look at the U.S. 10-year government bond rates, uh, it seems to be stabilizing at below 1.4%. Right now, it's trading at 1.3%. Uh, and also, if you look at the overall earnings numbers, uh, it seems to be uh, showing in the right track. Uh, and even though there are concerns about the Delta strain COVID-19 variant, um, we think that the economy seems to be opening up quite reasonably uh, in the right direction. Uh, having said that, if you look at the upbeat U.S. jobless claim numbers as well as the unemployment numbers and all, uh, we think that U.S. economy recovering is in the right track. So all in all, uh, we think that the fundamental uh, is much more important than uh, these headline news on the COVID-19 or the inflation numbers. Uh, if the corporate earnings remains to be very strong, and then that should continue to be the case uh, over the next several quarters, then we think the U.S. market can uh, rise even further from the current level. Uh, however, though, if you look at the month of August and September, usually tends to be a fairly weak uh, month. Uh, usually towards the end of the month, uh, we see uh, quite significant rise. So we might see somewhat of a taking breather period uh, for U.S. market. But nevertheless, we think that earnings numbers are staggering and that it has not been this kind of strong earnings that we haven't seen in the past. So uh, as long as fundamentals are strong, we think that the market can further rise by the end of this year. Well, it's been something of the opposite story here in Korea. Today, the main stock index, the Kospi, was down for a seventh session in a row, and this time by quite a bit. Uh, the Kospi now below 3,200 points, and the Kosdaq today uh, also down uh, quite a lot. Tell us about the domestic market. Right. Uh, it's quite perturbing to see this kind of correction. Uh, if we look at the earnings numbers and the fundamentals of Kospi, it is showing the record high numbers, and it continues to show very strong numbers. Uh, but uh, because of skewedness towards the semiconductor industry, uh, Korea having uh, Samsung Electronics and uh, SK Hynix being uh, around 30% uh, plus, and all the uh, semiconductor businesses are uh, as much as 40% of the market capitalization, uh, we saw major sellout within this industry, particularly memory uh, uh, DRM industry side. Uh, for the past several days, we have seen foreign investors dumping uh, these stocks. And even today, if you look at the Samsung Electronics, the net selling uh, amounted to 31 million shares plus today. Yesterday was 22 million shares. The day before, 13 million shares. Uh, this is quite this is quite a ridiculous level of amount um, unless we think that uh, there's a serious problem with this company. Uh, we don't think that this kind of selling can last. We think that this is very short-term oriented, um, uh, assuming that the DRAM price will fall quite sharply towards the fourth quarter and next year, that the uh, DRAM cycle is over, memory cycle is over. Uh, unless you think that, uh, we don't think that this kind of short selling can last for that long period of time. Uh, having said that, um, because of that, we did see Kospi as a whole did decline by about 1.16% today. Kostak was also down by 1.26%. Uh, quite perturbing to see how uh, foreign investors uh, are, and using short selling 
to control the market uh, trend. Uh, we don't think that the uh, semiconductor business is at uh, peak uh, per se in terms of the earnings. The third quarter should be even better. Uh, yes, we are seeing some spot prices going down, but in terms of the contract prices, we don't think that it's going to fall that much. Uh, it seems that as if that uh, Samsung Electronics and SK Enix is actually losing their market share or uh, if this kind of share price makes sense, uh, share price movement makes sense. Uh, so therefore, we don't think that uh, this can last that very long. Uh, we will have to wait and see because of the short-term correction-wise, uh, we do see that the DRM price is falling uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the, um, the spot prices. So therefore, uh, volatility might uh, last a bit longer. Uh, but uh, on a longer-term basis, we don't think that Korea's fundamental is gone away. Yeah, remarkable selling um, in recent days by foreign investors here in Korea. And uh, to switch gears for a minute, the U.S. Senate has passed the big infrastructure bill uh, worth a trillion dollars. And as we've discussed before, it seems to add new reporting requirements for cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, still needs to be passed by the House, but that's a concern for some in the crypto space. So the price of Bitcoin uh, has recovered from its recent low, but right now it's sitting at around $45,000. What do you see happening with respect to this bill and cryptocurrencies? Right. Um, as far as the uh, money supply are concerned, uh, if you look at the U.S. money supply growth rate of M1, uh, it's rising at around uh, mid-10% uh, level, so somewhere between uh, 15 to 16 percent year-on-year growth rate. Uh, if that continues, and even though we are expecting some tapering coming through, we don't think that the liquidity injection would be taken away. Uh, we will see some gradual decline, but nevertheless, the money supply growth rate will continue to be uh, strong. Uh, if so, then the alternative assets such as gold, silver, and uh, cryptocurrency should uh, further rise uh, in the future. Uh, if you look at these uh, three asset classes, uh, you can see that the commodity prices, so-called gold and silver, are going down or has do gone down quite significantly recently, while the cryptocurrency has increased from around uh, uh, low level by now about 50% plus from this bottom. So uh, clearly, uh, most of these money that are investing into the alternative assets, they have invested all into the, the uh, cryptocurrency rather than other assets such as gold and silver. Uh, I'm not sure how long that will last, but in any case, adding all these three classes of assets, it should be rising somewhere around 10% plus off, uh, uh, over the next uh, one year or so because of that liquidity injection that you're seeing that reduces the value of currency and that people will be looking for alternative assets such as gold, silver, and uh, cryptocurrency. So, uh, yes, there's a regulatory environment issues. Yes, uh, people are concerned about the cryptocurrency, but uh, as long as the alternative asset class uh, remains to be very important, uh, that uh, in the past also uh, gold and silver were used as alternative asset, even though uh, they're not uh, currencies. Uh, so uh, if uh, U.S. government introduces the, um, the cyber currency, uh, we don't think that that will take away the value of cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's just uh, a currency that is anti-government per se, uh, and it, it, it remains to be such, uh, and that has certain value to it. So uh, we think that as long as U.S. government continues to print money, uh, we think that the cryptocurrency can further rise. Um, and uh, if not from the cryptocurrency, then it might affect the gold and silver value. So all in all, we think that uh, this is an area that we should at least invest a uh, certain part of the asset uh, in the future. Well, also, uh, finally, Mr. Yu, somewhat related to monetary policy, uh, household loans in Korea increasing by almost 10 trillion won, uh, which is about $9 billion or so, uh, interest rates at all-time lows. So if they start going the other way, that could be a burden for some people on their payments. Uh, should that be a concern? And what can you say about timing and other aspects of this situation? Right. Uh, I've been talking about this issue in a different uh, aspect. Uh, if they raise interest rate on the uh, uh, overall, the OK raises interest rate and that affects the consumer lending rate, uh, 
uh, we think that we will probably face quite significant meltdown per se in terms of the consumer debt area. Um, we think that the better way to handle this is trying to increase the value of the asset of the retail uh, investors. And we've been saying that the equity market needs to rise further as more uh, citizens of Korea participate into the equity area. Uh, if you look at the um, where the uh, liabilities or debt rises happens, is related to the real estate market. So as long as the real estate prices continues to go up, then we will see continuation of the debt rises. Uh, and that's skewed towards the only small pie of the population. Um, so therefore, uh, we need to see uh, other assets such as uh, stock market needs to rise and that value increases that affects the, uh, the debt level. So uh, we think that if as long as the property price continues to rise, we don't see any rooms for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the overall uh, debt size can be reduced. So uh, if the government is trying to tackle this through the interest rate, then in fact it will affect the uh, small mid uh, individuals, so, so-called the low-income bracket individuals uh, and the sub-debt levels and all that would affect very significantly negatively. Uh, raising interest rate is not going to affect these uh, high net worth individuals per se, having more than two, three, four, five houses. So uh, I think that the better way of handling it is, is not through the interest rate rise, but it is through the uh, providing some kind of tax benefits to the investing into the equity market and affecting more of a low to mid income bracket rather than the high end of the individuals. So many levels on which we have to think about uh, this issue. Mr. Yu, we value your uh, perspective and appreciate you coming on to share that with us. Uh, thank you for coming on and have a great weekend. Thank you. You too.